Hey guys, welcome to today's video, and today we're going to carry on. What if Bardock was king? So where we left off, Cell had just completely dismantled all the Z fighters and just left them in a state. This perfect Cell is more powerful than the Cell that we saw in canon. More powerful than perfect Cell once he came back after blowing himself up and killing Goku. So now the Saiyans had learned the Metamory fusion dance and so had the humans, but that'll be insignificant for now. So, we go down to Cell Games three days after they were demolished. So Cell says, have you gotten stronger? This is when the whole thing with Mr. Satan and uh, all his guys, it, well, the insignificant people, that just happens like normal. And the fight between Bardock and Perfect Cell begins. Now, Bardock has been learning the fusion dance. He has not gotten much stronger, but he just wanted to test Cell's threshold, how strong he actually was. So this is actually not even close. Cell dismantles Bardock, throws him to one side, says that he is basically nothing compared to him. Bardock limps over to the others who quickly give him a sense of being. And Bardock says, well, if it takes that, Kakarot, it's time. Cell is intrigued by this. Time. Time for what? This is when they do the fusion dance and create a brand new fighter. Now, father and son fusion is complete and the power is immense. They quickly transform into a Super Saiyan and the battle begins. Going toe to toe with Perfect Cell. Now, this fusion is immensely powerful and is overpowering Cell in every single way, shape and form, dismantling him. Cell is, well, He's backed into a corner. He tries to self-destruct. Now, with all of them knowing the instant transmission technique, well, let's just say that this fusion, they take Cell away and put him onto a planet with only like a very small population. Let's say there's only like, it's a deserted planet basically, and they take away the inhabitants to a different planet and Cell blows up. So, as we remember in canon, Cell did this and he regenerated and was a lot stronger due to his Zenkai boost. But this cell is still, he's still not strong enough to take them down. He's regenerated and his power is immensely higher. He knows the instant transmission technique anyway, but Cell waits a little while because he needs to come up with a plan B. This is when he senses that power split back into Bardock and Kakarot and he returns to the planet. And as he originally did, he fires a blast straight away and kills Kakarot. So Bardock looking at his son, He's dying, the same way that Trunks was originally. Now, Bardock charges Cell. This rage that he has, seeing his son knocked down like that, his son being brutally murdered when they thought they'd won the battle. Bardock now achieves Super Saiyan 2 and goes also with Cell, but in the end, it is not enough. Even the Super Saiyan 2 Bardock is not quite strong enough to outmatch this perfect Cell. Although he did get a few good blows in, it was pretty close, but Cell outmatches Bardock and he's beaten once again. Now, as Bardock is laying on the ground, Cell about to deal with finishing blow, we hear the word fusion. Now, this means that Raditz and Trunks have fused and this new fusion, well, I can't think of a name of for it right now, well not a fitting name anyway. If you guys want to leave a suggestion for the fusion of Trunks and Raditz in the comments below, please do that. But for now, he charges Cell and beats him to a pulp. They're not going to let him try his last technique. They quickly blast him with all they've got and he is incinerated into nothing. Now the next bit of story goes pretty similar. Everyone's revived, Olive and Kakarot are brought back and Trunks goes back to his timeline and defeats the androids. So next, next seven years, well, Bardock, he heads back to rule his planet because of course he has to and the rest stay on Earth. Now in this time, Krillin and Olive have a child. This child's gonna name, well, nameless for the time being. Again, because I want to see what names you guys come up with because in the past you guys have come up with some great names like Olive herself. That was a recommendation from a former video. But they're not the only ones to have a child. That means Kakarot and his wife have a child too. Again, let you guys pick up the names. So, we get to the seven years that have passed and now Trunks, the son of 
Raditz and Bulma is 15 years old and he is a prodigy in every way, shape or form. He's even smarter than Gohan. So he has gotten to Orange Star High School a little bit sooner. He's got straight through all of his exams and because he's a grandchild of Dr. Briefs, he goes on his name and goes straight into the class a few years early where he meets Fidel. And as per normal, Mr. Satan has tried to take credit for defeating Cell because the blast that happened, again, it blew out all of the equipment so no one actually saw what happened and the dust cloud that was created from the blast that was sent, well, it blocked the vision and view from all the others that were present and obviously none of the Z fighters really care. So now this is a pretty like similar exchange between Trunks and Videl as there was between her and Gohan to the point where she's actually caught Trunks flying to school so obviously he's not going to adopt the same like same man persona like Gohan did because obviously he's not that kind of person he just wants to go about his day and well, he just fits in really, he's not being raised in the wilderness like Gohan was essentially away from everyone, he's been raised in the city so he kind of just blends in and he knows how to keep his power suppressed but every now and then he shows a glimpse of it and Videl has been watching him cause well, obviously Trunks briefs, he's a prodigy, everything to do with him has caught her attention and she has been watching him in the way that she watched Gohan and has blackmailed him into trying to get her, him to teach her how to fly otherwise she'll tell everyone that he can fly basically and out him as some kind of freak and for someone that's just trying to fit in this isn't what he wants so he actually teaches her how to fly similar to how Gohan did and they, they enter the world martial arts tournament now all the Z fighters in there like normal well there's a few more of them this time though obviously Yamcha, he'll enter, Krillin, Kakarot, Raditz, Trunks, Videl. So no Piccolo or Vegeta in this scenario. Piccolo is just staying away from anything Saiyan related. He's training, but he's nowhere near strong enough to take them down or even come close to them. So he's just been keeping himself to himself. So the tournament comes and the Supreme Kai shows up like normal. So his fight shows up and he would have been facing Raditz. Now this fight goes, well, Raditz is stronger than Supreme Kai. He has achieved Super Saiyan 2 in the time skip and the Supreme Kai is, well, he's mortified pretty much. How can a mortal be stronger than a Kai? But Kabito is more mortified than what he is. He is absolutely disgusted by this fact and has to bow down to the sayings that they are superior to even the gods. The Supreme Kai is defeated in this fight and after exiting the ring, he tells them about what is going on. During this time, Videl is getting beaten to a pulp. So now her fight ends like normal. She has to surrender and is given a sensu beat. Now Kakarot enters the ring with Kabito. Now he is told to power up as high as he can. So he does this and this is when well Smopovich and Yamu jump in to drain his power they didn't do this to Raditz because the Supreme Kai was there they've been warned about him to stay away but they haven't got enough information to know who Kabito is so they're not really bothered about him so here they get a lot more power than what they did from Gohan because Raditz is constantly training transformed into Super Saiyan 2 they've got a lot more energy from him because he had to push his limits even further during the Cell games. So they get back, give this energy and are killed. So now all the Z fighters head straight over and well, it just goes as you expect. First two fights, completely the same. Well, except for trading, for trading Vegeta with Raditz and now Trunks, who we've not actually seen fight in this what if. He will step up for the first time and straight away he transforms into Super Saiyan 2. That's right, I did mention in an earlier video that he had been training from birth and seeing what his father, his uncle and his auntie can accomplish. Well, he has pushed himself to his limits. He's a fighter through and through and he just wipes out the barra. They smash through the ship and they kill Babadi. Now, Majin Buu 
will never escape. So, to Supreme Kai, thanks him, takes Boo's uh, pod back to his planet just to be safe. And that's it for the Boo Saga. There is no Boo Saga. Now, let's quickly touch on Battle of Gods. So, every now and then, Kakarot, he will go off to train on the Supreme Kai's planet because he still is in some ways like Goku he's wanting to get stronger and stronger and he's begged the Supreme Kai to let him train and knowing instant transmission still he'll go there every now and then Raditz will join him and so will Olive and they'll train eventually they've used the Z sword and unlocked the Elder Kai now despite the fact that there's no threat Goku pestering him about his abilities he's wanted to show off the fact that he can unlock Potential. So, well, he does this on Olive and she becomes immensely powerful. So, Gohan never used Super Saiyan with his ultimate form. So, it's kind of unclear in some senses how that works because in Super, he transformed to Super Saiyan, then to Super Saiyan 2, but his ultimate form was something beyond that and he never used the, them together. So, it's unclear on what that actually is. But Raditz and Kakarot, they want to do things the old fashioned way, they see this as a bit of a shortcut but just wanted to see what the Elder Kai could actually do. So in the next few years we get Lord Beerus arriving. Now everyone is on Earth for Bulma's party and uh, the Supreme Kai is talking to the others on Earth when Beerus is on his way, telling them not to mess this up not to piss off Beerus as he has a very short temper so he arrives on the planet also, he's not met any of them before like, in canon he's met Vegeta before who remembered him after a bit but yeah they all just have to bow down to him and they have actually explained to the others who he is so that there's no well nothing that'll set him off but eventually Beerus does run out of food and gets angry and the fight begins so let's sound off how many Saiyans are there we've got Raditz we've got Kakarot we've got Olive we've got Trunks we've got the two kids so there's six of them there there's enough for this ritual and then some of you may be wondering whatever happened with Trunks and Adele yeah they did get together but she's not pregnant there's no need for that pot armor here so as per normal they ask Shenron about the Super Saiyan God Kakarot is given the Super Saiyan God power through the ritual and goes toe to toe with Beerus so Kakarot here he is weaker than Goku was in canon so there's no Super Saiyan 3, there's no other world training that he had for 7 years. Yes, he was constantly training, but he has not reached that level, he has not reached that peak point. So he is weaker, but this doesn't really matter because Goku wasn't a match for Beerus anyway. He just gave him a decent fight and showed him what Super Saiyan God was. So Kakarot basically does the same, and the story of, the Super of Beerus, well, the Battle of Gods ends the same. Now guys... That is where I will leave it for now. I hope you enjoyed this one. Covered quite a bit in this one compared to what we have done in the past. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.